from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily Televised Mass. My name is Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Marie Stevens, Louise Roy, Lucille Roy, Harold Fox, and Georgette Caron. This Mass is offered in loving memory of Rosalie and Robert Côté and for the intentions of their family members. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Four of them, Marie, Louise, Lucille, and Georgette, are here today at Loretto Abbey. I welcome them most warmly to this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your Church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, a birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see, see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He provides food for those who fear him. 
He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name, his praise endures forever. The Lord will remember his covenant Christ was rich, but he became poor to make you rich out of his poverty. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these things since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. The gospel of the Lord. The gospel or good news about Jesus and about what God has done for us through him is both a gift and a challenge. Today's reading from the first letter of Peter emphasizes its gift character. Well, the passage I just read from the gospel of Mark focuses more on the challenge it involves. Peter is writing to a community which, as he puts it, has suffered various trials. In order to strengthen its members in their faith and to encourage them in the face of the inevitable persecutions that lie ahead, Peter reminds them of the extraordinary gifts that are theirs in Jesus. God, he says, has given us a new birth, 
a birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. This new birth, a birth in the Spirit, has brought us into a new life-giving, life-healing relationship with God and promises us final salvation beyond this world in him. A few weeks ago, Pope Francis published what is known as an apostolic exhortation entitled, On the Call to Holiness in Today's World. Holiness, the Pope insists, is the vocation of everyone. The various forms holiness takes are adapted to the specific kind of life that each of us is called to live. It could be the life of a monk or a religious sister, of a married or single person. I like to contemplate the holiness present in the patience of God's people, the Pope says, in those parents who raise their children with immense love, in those men and women who work hard to support their families, in the sick, in the elderly religious who never lose their smile. Very often it is a holiness found in our next door neighbor, he says, those who living in our midst reflect God's presence. Holiness, no matter what the context in which it is lived, as Pope Benedict explained, is nothing other than charity, love lived to the full. In speaking of contemporary enemies of holiness, Pope Francis mentions Pelagianism, a spiritual and moral attitude named after a controversial figure in the early church. People who have the attitude suggested by that name tend to forget how profoundly we need God and his gifts. If we are to take even the first step towards holiness, we need his presence, his support. I am the vine, Jesus once said. You are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Modern Pelagians, the Pope argues, ultimately trust only in their own powers. They feel superior to others, because, for example, they observe certain rules and remain intransigently faithful to a particular Catholic style. Humility, an awareness of our limits and of our need for God, is something without which genuine holiness is impossible. St. Augustine summed up the attitude the Pope is evoking when he prayed, Grant what you command, and command what you will. In other words, ask me to do anything, but as you ask me, give me the grace and courage that will enable me to do it. The focus in today's gospel is less on God's gift and more on our response to it, on what what's me must do in order to live in friendship with God on what holiness requires of us. To the man who raises the question about salvation, Jesus answered by citing the second half of the Ten Commandments, those that have to do with the way we treat one another. What this entails becomes more focused in the parable of the Last Judgment in the Gospel of Matthew where, we are, where, we are, where what we do or fail to do for the hungry and the homeless, the sick and the imprisoned, for those in need, this will determine our future destiny. Recognizing the obvious goodwill of the man who asked him what he must do to gain eternal life, Jesus invites him to go further along the path to holiness by selling his goods giving the money to the poor, and joining with Jesus in his itinerant ministry. The man declined, Mark says, and went away grieving 
for he had many possessions. Given the various ways in which holiness can be lived out, part of the challenge to each one of us is to recognize the particular path on which we are called to walk. No matter what form holiness will take for us, we can be sure that at its heart will be the distinctively Christian virtues of faith, hope, and love. Faith in God and what God has done for us in Jesus. Hope and trust in the promises that are ours through the resurrection. And love, that twofold love of God and neighbor, which sums up, according to both Jesus and Paul, the Mosaic law and the prophets. In developing his vision of holiness, Pope Francis begins with a brief mention of the Beatitudes. In them, he sees an outline of some of the things that holiness entails. Humility, meekness, a thirst for justice, mercy, the sowing of peace. In order to make progress along the path of holiness, we need to be moved and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Mother Teresa once said, I have many faults and failings, but God bends down and uses me and us to be his love and his compassion in the world. He bears our sins, our troubles, our faith. He depends on us to love the world and to show how much he loves it. Gift and challenge. God's grace and our efforts to fulfill the mission entrusted to us. Here, the Pope reminds us, is the twofold key to the holiness to which we are all called. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our commitment to striving for holiness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those members of our daily televised mass community who have asked for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis and for his efforts to stir the conscience of the world to intervene on behalf of refugees and immigrants, as well as victims of war, terror, and natural disaster, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mingling of this water, we have become partakers of his divinity, we became partaker of your humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Gracious God, we ask you. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O oh God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the fate of your church, faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Let all things now if you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details. <laughs>